if you are looking out for everything related to sustainability and climate risk program of CARP, then this video will help you. In this video, we're going to be talking about everything related to the program, the exam structure, fees, jobs, and also we're going to be talking about how you can get better opportunities using this certification. So let us start with the video. My first discussion point or agenda point is going to be what exactly is SCR exam? Okay, then we're going to be moving towards what are the benefits of the SCR exam, how it can help you to grow in your career. How exactly is the structure of the exam? What are the pattern? What are the topics? Everything we're going to be talking about. There are eight topics which are, the, which are generally covered in this exam. So we're going to be talking about those in details with the weightages perspective. Further, we're going to be talking about the exam fee. Okay, it's slightly different than what you see for some, some other courses. We're going to be talking about that. And also related to the exam deferral or retaking fees, we're going to be covering over here. And then we'll move towards the career opportunity. What will happen on the day of the exam? We'll also talk about it and how to complete the registration if you want to go for the SCR exam. And what are the books and materials which are available for your preparation? And finally, we'll also talk about how Fintelligence can help you to clear SCR as soon as possible in your career. So let us start with the discussion. Guys, uh, my name is Ganesh Naik, and I'm going to be walking you through the first topic now, which is SCR. What exactly is the sustainability and the climate risk exam? So GARP has come out with this exam in 2017. Okay, previously they had energy risk professional, which is ERP program then they discontinued that program and they started out with sustainability and climate risk this is a very broader program okay so they started out this program in uh, 2020 and this program aimed to focus on sustainability related consulting work and also because also the risk that is related to climate which is day by day increasing how companies will get impacted and they want to make sure that there are sufficient amount of risk professional with that level of understanding and knowledge. So they focus more on sustainability standards, which are going to impact both financial institutions and non-financial institutions. So when you read the content for SCR, it is very generic. It is not only focused on bank, but it is also talking about non-financial institution itself. And when we talk about sustainability, it is not again only focusing on financial in, in, in companies. It is co connected to supply chain management businesses, manufacturing businesses, operations, technology. So it is focusing on wide variety of domain. Also, till now, what we have seen is there are more than 2,000 people who have already got their SCR title and there are 6,981 people who have registered till now for the exam. So the number is growing very fast because the demand for climate and sustainability related risk professionals is also growing. So from that perspective, this certification will open up new doors in your career. So let us move towards more detail about the exam. So SCR exam is conducted by GARP, Global Association of Risk Professionals. They're very famous for conducting FRM, Financial Risk Management Program. And this is very cheap as compared to the other certifications which are available and which are connected to climate risk or sustainability. So the cost wise, it is also nominal. Also, it requires around 100 to 130 hours of preparation. That means per chapter, there are eight chapters in this curriculum. Even if you give around 10 hours, okay, roughly, or more than 10 hours, say 15 hours, you'll still be able to cover within the 100, and 100 to 130 hours of preparation. There is no eligibility. This is a very, very important point. Anybody can give this exam. You don't need a work experience requirement. You don't need, a, a, say, for example, a particular educational degree requirement to go for the certification. And there is at finally, we will also be talking about the voluntary continuous professional development section. There is a separate slide that we have created on this overall level. The exam is of no negative marking. That means whatever 80 questions you're going to get, you can take those questions and come uh, in the exam. The results are generally declared after around six weeks delay. And uh, there is no set criteria as such that, okay, out of 80, if you score 40 or 45, you'll be able to clear the exam. There is no set criteria given by the Institute. But, but the Institute comes out with quartiles. They tell you that in each chapter, what was your performance as compared to the other people. So SCR advisory committee will take a decision on how exactly the result has to be declared and how many pass percentage should be maintained. Okay, so generally it takes around four weeks to six weeks that you get the result for your exam. 
and it's a very standard process process that they also follow similarly for frm exam so this was what is scr let us move towards the pathway to become scr or a sustainability and climate certified professional what what is required to be done so over here first section is prepare so you will have to register with carp institute and then while registering you have to prepare they will provide you with some material that will help you to prepare for the exam you will have to familiarize yourself with the concepts which are being tested in the core curriculum and then you have to appear for the exam it's a one level single exam okay and in that exam you'll get 80 multiple choice questions to be completed in 3 hour it's a computer based uh, testing exam which is in person that means you have to select the location book the center book the time date and go for the exam now you can only book the time and date within the window we'll be coming and talking about it in more detail so you have you'll have to pass the exam clear it and then there is voluntary uh, continued professional development it is voluntary it is not mandatory as of now where they are asking you to do certain webinars certain uh, sessions or certain uh, white paper you'll have to read or attend certain workshops which will give you credit points okay that is strongly recommended but not a part of the requirement for the scr exam so do not worry on it as of now further i am going to talk about what exactly is the benefit of the scr exam which effectively means why you should do this certification first of all this skill set is very new and very rare very very few people in the market would have something related to climate and sustainability and this domain is bound to grow in the future as we move ahead in time the climate risk is going to be more and more prominent for the financial institutions and for non financial institutions so definitely having the certification will add a new skill set which can trigger your success in your career industry recognition so right now the certification of scr is widely recognized it's a global certification so people do recognize it across the industry not only in financial markets but also outside financial market where the sustainability concept is very hugely discussed so global certification means if you are a student or a working professional in india the certification will give you an opportunity to go and work across the globe especially in the developed markets like us and uk where the certification will give you an added advantage okay next part is continued learning so a lot of working professionals what they face is that they have done certain basic uh, uh, education they've started their career now after 7 10 years they feel there is no learning in your career so they want to upskill so this certification will give them a very very good opportunity to upskill into a very niche area competitive advantage your cv will become very strong especially in the consulting area where certifications and degrees all of these are widely seen as a domain of expertise and that is why competitive advantage will be because of this certification and it helps you to move to new roles new career opportunities so a lot of lot of big four lot of consulting companies are now focusing on climate risk a lot of non financial firms are also now focusing on sustainability so it will give you an opportunity to move into those roles at the end i'll also be talking about certain job opportunities which are, al are already available in the market which we can have a look at let us move to who should do scr course so i'll just given you four bifurcation somebody who is a student and is keen that in the future i want to get into something unique and i want to focus more on climate and sustainability risk they can apply for it people who are looking out for a career change they can also apply for it okay career change into something new something exciting where the regulations are going to change now where the government is also becoming slowly and steadily serious that a career change can be helpful if you do scr certification if you are working with government bodies the non professional non profit uh, professionals they can also go and enter and do this certification because this will help them to focus more on regulatory policy making areas and business professionals this is more from the perspective of if i am working in an investment bank and i want to broaden my horizon i just do not want to focus on say core risk the financial non financial risk i want to get into something very unique and different this certification will help you so benefit of the scr exam i have just given you a brief let us now move into the exam structure and the fees okay so every every global certification exam they generally have a two way pricing that means there is an early bird pricing till a particular date and there is a standard pricing obviously the standard pricing is slightly higher so let us now talk about the uh, exam fee for 
the SCR. Now, what they have done is they have bifurcated into three parts. That means if you are a non-member which is not registered with SCR, your fees is slightly higher. That means it's $650 if you pay early and $750 if you pay late. If you are a member, okay, then you, have, you get a $100 discount and you have to pay only $550 and $650, whichever uh, early bird or standard fee is applied to you. But if you are a charter holder, which means if you are a FRM charter holder or ERP charter holder, you get further discount and the fees gets lowered. So most of the students who would be appearing for this exam either would be a member or a certified charter holder. So the fees would be applicable as per this. When is this exam conducted? Every year it is conducted twice in terms of April and October. Okay, the exam date uh, will also talk about how the exam is conducted. So it's a computer based exam. You get 80 questions and three hours to clear the exam. Is three hours sufficient to clear 80 questions? Yes, it is. Because majority of the content of the exam is theoretical, not calculation based. If suppose you want to retake the exam, you appeared, you paid the fees, you could not clear. You can pay $350. Uh, you can also retake in the sense you can take pay $350 to appear in the next two attempts. Okay, this is a reduced fees given to the students who could not clear. So $350 to appear in the next two attempts and become a SCR charter holder. So this was the broader version of the exam structure and fees. There's also a concept of exam deferral. Suppose you paid the fees, okay, and you're a member, you paid $650 and you have now decided to uh, defer the exam, okay, but you'll have to defer it on a particular deadline. That means, suppose we are talking about if, I, if I'm planning to appear for the October exam, then I have to take a decision before 1st of October. If I'm planning to appear for the April exam, it has to be before 1st of April. So deadline has to be followed properly. And you can only defer it once during the entire window. There is an administrative fees of 100 USD. That means because you're going to defer to the next window, there has to be a fee that you'll have to pay. And though if suppose it goes into a next window, which means suppose you applied for October and then you deferred it till April, then in that case, they will, re, uh, they will give you the new books, the SCR books curriculum for you to prepare for free. So generally, most of the students, they don't defer. They give the exam in the first go itself, okay? Because the curriculum is not very vast. What exactly is the registration process? So now when we talk about the exam registration, I'm focusing right now on the October exam. Something similar will have for the uh, April itself. So the registration will open on 1st of May. Okay, further, the 31st of July is the early bird registration for the exam. That means you get a lower fees. Then if you miss that, you have standard registration, which is going to stay for till 30th of September. And the exam window is between 21 to 29th October. So it's at the end of October and you have to schedule. Now to schedule the exam, you have to schedule 48 hours before the date. Suppose if I want to choose the date of 29th of October, I can schedule it till 27th. That means 48 hours before that date, I can go on the site, I can schedule the exam within that window. Okay, that is why the scheduling deadline is so late. Next point being, what exactly is the payment method? Okay, so you can pay either using credit card, check, this is a US check, and then you can use wire transfer. For both paying through check and wire transfer, you have an extra administrative fees of $50. Majority of the students, they do not go for it. They go for credit card payment itself. It's fast, easy, and reliable. Exam scheduling, like I talked about, you can, uh, the, there, is, there are certain points that you have to remember. So suppose I've registered for the uh, SCR exam, the next step would be to schedule my exam. Now I can only schedule my exam to a Pearson test center. Okay, it's an in-person CBT exam, which effectively means I have to go to the center and give the exam. And you have to select the Pearson in your country, Pearson test center in your country, in your city, the nearest city that is there. And you, have, you can do it 48 hours before the desired exam date. So like I said, 29th October, I want to give the exam. Till 27th, I can go and schedule my exam. Now scheduling can only be done for the window that you have registered. So for example, I registered for October. I cannot go and schedule for April. I have to schedule in, in October itself. And basically what is going to happen if suppose you do not schedule your exam, your admission will get cancelled and you'll have to repay the entire amount, all the applicable fees. So every student must remember this. 
you have to repay the exam if you do not schedule your exam okay so they're very stringent on this there is no leeway for any student what are the important documents that are required so generally gar provides slight flexibility as compared to cfa institutes you have a passport and driving license whichever document is available you can use it as a reference but these documents should follow the criteria first of all it has to be an original document you cannot take a photocopy of it and it should be valid on the day of the exam it should be a valid document it should be issued by the government and it should have your photo and signature so all of these things are uh, indirectly managed in your passport and driving license so nothing to worry but these are the criteria which they will check when you take the document at the exam center what is the pass percentage for the exam historically the pass percentage has been around 50% so if you look at april 2021 it was around 52% october 55 and april 2022 54 and october 51% roughly it is around 50% which is very good if you compare to other exams so if you look at frm it is around 40 to 45% cfa again 40 to 45% it can go down also but for this exam the pass percentage is good so this this should be and motivating point for all the students who are going to appear for the scr exam in the future okay what are the topics that are covered like i said there are eight chapters in the curriculum and i have also on the screen you can see that there are different weightages for each chapter okay for example the first chapter theoretical chapter a slightly uh, important chapter because they, have, they range around 8 to 12 questions in this section so first chapter is important from your preparation sustainability in climate risk uh, more focus on the physical and the transition risk that we face so and the second chapter sustainability gives you the basic concept of how the standards are set what is sustainability means all of these things are over here so at, at a broader level there are eight chapters that you want to cover out of that the chapter number 6 is slightly important because the weightage is higher for them and the last chapter is not that important because net zero is currently at least in 2023's curriculum it is only 3 to 6 question that they are asking so they have given you a range in which we can ask you a question and the overall content is going to come from your these eight chapter so from the curriculum perspective this is not very vast and you can easily complete it and do entire preparation in 100 to 130 hours of your exam let us see what happens on when you go on the day of the scr exam okay so normally we know that it is 180 minutes that is 3 hours you get but that 180 is bifurcated so first you will find a non disclosure agreement which wherein you will have a time minute of 1 minute to accept it okay now a lot of students have seen that they keep on reading that nda uh, points and they miss out on that 1 minute and their exam get cancelled so please do not take that risk the non disclosure agreement is to be accepted within 1 minute next is tutorial you will have tutorial for 1 minute okay about the exam structure how the window uh, will look for you how how you can select a question all of these thing how you can flag the question everything and then you have 178 minute to appear for the exam and you will also find a timer at the top uh, of the of your screen to get you an idea that at, for how much time has been left for your exam so it is 80 question multiple choice 3 hour no negative marking exam there is a concept of cdp cpd which is nothing but continuous professional development now this is not mandatory for frms and scr charter holders but what is cpd basically they are asking you to continuously learn and develop yourself and for that they follow a two year cycle so for an frm charter holder you have to complete 40 credits and within that two years and for scr you have to cover 20 credits that within that two year and how do we get that credit so they have done tie ups with lot of these institutes uh, colleges and all that and you can attend their sessions attend their uh, white paper webinars or seminar and you can get you will get credit points so there is a, a complete list on the website of the uh, garp institute so you can go and check it over there what are the different types of career opportunities now i'm going to share with you some of the prominent job roles which i have seen people have got after completing scr okay so you can become a sustainability analyst and consultant most big fours are hiring this climate risk analyst these are generally the government uh, specific bodies or ngos or any specific consultants who work with government they hire them sustainability managers they are explicitly hired for fmcg companies or uh, say for example pepsi coke 
these kind of companies corporate csr manager is there with everybody if you are working in csr and you get get sustainability related certification that is also going to be very very value add for you then there are other three four uh, job roles which i have seen and which are there in the market which people get into say policy analyst is also very important a lot of hedge funds they uh, hire people to look at the climate risk in their portfolio okay so that is very very interesting job profiles that are available and few uh, of the major recruiters which are there is pwc kpmg all the big fours you have banks also hiring them then you have msci also hiring tech giants who are into kp or business they also hire it fmcg companies are also hiring them agricultural companies banks which are like barclays nbfc like we with three capital they are also hiring so it's it's a mix everybody slowly and gradually is talking about sustainability they are talking about climate risk so opportunities will grow in the future few of the job roles that i could uh, identify easily on the linkedin and nokri.com so snp was hiring for senior analyst climate and environmental methodology again snp manager climate transition this they were also hiring people over there then there is center of council which is a government specific body they are also hiring a research analyst for their for their like organization further you can also find crisel hiring ey pepsico then the lot of other organizations who are doing it accenture hiring vivitri capital lot of them are hiring uh, on their uh, portals on job portals on linkedin so you can check that check that part and this domain will grow more and more companies will get into climate risk and sustainability related discussion point what are the book materials which are available now from the institute perspective they will give you a soft copy of the sustainability and climate risk ebook again you cannot take the print of the ebook which has been provided by the institute and they will also give you a sample paper which consists of 180 question that means eight one set of 80 question which you can help which uh, which you can use to give, give get an idea of how the exam question is going to be but these materials slightly limited but we can help you in preparing for the exam and what we do we have three broader packages the first package is a basic plan which includes only the question bank now in this question bank you will get past year sample papers also you will get for each chapter four four quizzes okay each quiz around 20 20 question okay so roughly 100 questions for each chapter and then you will also have mock papers which are designed from our experience of teaching and training students okay the next is the standard package which is a mix which has the question bank plus the videos okay so there are roughly 30 hours uh, video lectures which will help you to go through the overall gar content very fast and easy manner and the explanation is also very simple and easy okay and the entire uh, things which are there the basic plan is also over here then you have a professional plan which is Uh, nothing but a standard plan plus a live session so we'll be starting out with our live batch okay in the mid of august for the october exam it will continue till september mid so almost one month we are going to be covering around eight session for eight chapter we'll be doing the entire curriculum for you guys okay so there'll be live session in the professional package also the pricing is available on our website you can go and check that okay i hope you guys like the video and uh, the, if there is any query that you guys have you can reach out to us on our whatsapp number the number is given uh, at the description center and also if you have any specific query with respect to scr you can put it on the comment section we will try to address it as soon as possible okay so i hope you like this video stay tuned we are going to be coming up with more such content related to the exams